So good morning, everybody. Um, this is our uh, senior project presentation. So a little bit about who we are before we go into what we're really talking about. Okay, well, well, I'm Zach Walters, as you can see there. And um, a little bit about me. I played hockey for many, many years. And unfortunately, we didn't do a project based on that, but I really would have liked if we did, but that's OK. This one was still pretty cool, too. And I've been in the tech department for all four years. The first year, I started with tech draw. I moved on to intro to computer programming the next year. Then the next year, I took um, AP computer science. And then, of course, this year, I moved to senior projects. Okay, and a little bit about me, um, but more handsome than two. Is, uh, so yeah, I've, I basically lived in the tech department all four years as well. Um, I took Intro to Computer Programming and Intro to Game Design as a, a freshman with Mr. Moore um, before Mr. Ternowski came. Then my uh, sophomore year, I was fortunate enough to be in AP Computer Science with Zach Walters, um, where we were advanced our knowledge about uh, programming. And then I was able to be one of the juniors who actually was in this class last year. Um, I did a project uh, with computer science, and I wanted to continue that because that's what I'll be doing uh, when I go to Boulder next year. Um, in addition to that, I'm also a hockey player, um, and I'm a member of the Civil Air Patrol. Um, I'm a cadet major, and I just recently was named the cadet commander of the cabinet, which is basically our uh, boot camp in the summer. So a little bit about uh, our company, uh, Zach Walters is going to explain that. OK, well, we're Ascent Industries. And our logo is based on inspired innovation. And our logo is a wing with an upward slope to show that we want to ascend to the top of the industry. Kind of goes with our name. And um, our, we picked black because uh, it's bold. And we want a very simplistic logo to show that we're taking a simple approach. We want it to be simple and cheap and uh, very effective. Sales off, you know, ascent. I thought it was fun. Uh, so a little bit about our advisors. Uh, to start off with, we, we share the same advisor. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have uh, Christopher Sturb act as our expert advisor. He is a mathematical careers advisor for CCSD. Um, he's given us a lot of opportunities, which we'll explain later because of that. Um, for my support advisors, I have Mr. Ridlin, who is oh, right there in the back. Hi, Mr. Ridlin. Uh, we got Zach Walters, our first partner, because the best advi support advisor you can have is the one you're working with. Uh, I have Patrick Lewis. He was one of my expert advisors last year. He's also uh, my father. I feel sorry for him. Um, I also have Floyd Kabasta, who was in the Procedure Projects class last year. He's also one of my best friends. So he gives me a lot of advice. Um, and keeps me going. All right. And similarly for me, my um, expert advisor is Mr. Stirrup. And I'll keep it short because Chad kind of already went over his title. And my own. Uh, my other advisors are Mr. Ridley, Christian Frank, and Tim Frome, and Chad Lewis. So a little bit about our project. So talking about the inspiration. Um, so last year I was uh, I did kind of a smart house thing. It didn't turn out the way I wanted to. Um, definitely wasn't where I wanted to go with it. But I, I kind of learned I had a passion for helping other people, which kind of evolved into this. I decided, oh hey. Maybe I can help make a prosthetic hand for Mr. Ridlow. Um, that kind of was the, the source of the inspiration for it. But as I thought more about it, we, we kind of we came together and thought, well, hey, there's tons of people that were born without limbs, uh, born you know missing some part of their body, but there's such an expensive cost to going through and growing up and having to change prosthetic hands out. Every time they grow up and get a little bit older, they have to change these prosthetics out, and they cost thousands and thousands of dollars. So we thought it was a little ridiculous. In addition, there's, you know, there's an increasing amount of people or veterans who are coming back with missing limbs. So we wanted to create not only something that can be easily changed and fit to somebody who's growing up, but somebody who wants a more durable product. That's why, raise the curtains, we decided to come up with a prosthetic hand that you can control with your mind. Um, we, used, we did this, I'll explain later, but we did this because um, it allows ease of use, and it also can be a, a durable product. We wanted to change how prosthetic hands were made, and we wanted to come into this niche market and undercut the competition by you know, having a lower cost product. Okay, and our individual responsibilities, I'll go over these. And Chad, he's, his individual responsibilities, first he wanted to collect the brainwave data and analyze it, and he did that pretty well. He made a, a database of uh, various classmates, and he took a lot of sample data. And he wanted to derive accurate actions from respective thoughts. 
not 100% sure if he did that because his stuff confuses me and I try to avoid it. That's it. <laughs> he wanted to ensure that the control center works efficiently. I'm pretty sure it does that. That thing works pretty effectively when it does move. And he also wanted to coordinate cross-platform systems. And he did do that. It goes from the headset to the Raspberry Pi. And he also has it go into his laptop as well. And my, or my uh, responsibilities were designing print the hand, as you can see. Accomplished that. We wanted to use uh, servos for the movement of the finger. We accomplished that. Those move along with chat software. I wanted to calculate the power needed for the grip. We never got to that. The finger was, or the hand was never strong enough to actually grip anything. So really, there's no point in calculating the power. And then we wanted to allow independent movement of each finger. We never got to that. Chad, it would be simple to get there, though. We just need to add more functions to the code and take a little bit more data. But we didn't really have time for that with the time restraints of the class. But everything else, we got cleared out. So you thought that was our project objectives, but it wasn't. Um, so a little bit about what I wanted to accomplish over the course of this uh, year. One, I wanted to gather user EEG data and analyze it to find how it's using common thought. Um, I was able to accomplish this, this, this in some ways. Um, I also wasn't able to. I was able to collect the data and I was able to kind of see common patterns with it, but I wasn't able to utilize a tool such as MATLAB to really analyze it because I just didn't have the money to pay for the $100 license fee um, and I, just didn't, I ran out of time to do that. For the developing a work group prosthetic and it is controlled via the user find, check, done, put it off the list. I learned about using my SQL database, MATLAB and Raspberry Pi. I learned about using my SQL database and I learned a lot about using Raspberry Pi. Um, I was never really familiar with the Linux platform more even Python and I learned a lot about how to implement that and use that. Uh, as for MATLAB, like I said, I couldn't afford or have the money to go into it, so I decided not to use it for this project. I wanted to learn EEG data and communication protocols and I did that. In fact, one of the biggest pains in my project was figuring out how to make this talk to my computer. Not because um, it's hard to connect Bluetooth, but because the data that gets sent over um, is only translated in bits, so it's kind of hard to translate it back over to comprehensible information. And lastly, I wanted to develop a real-time visual representation of user's EEG data, and this actually happens through a live EEG graph, and if you come to our board afterwards, I can show you that. Okay, and then my project objectives were a little bit simpler. A little bit less confusing. Um, I wanted to create a functional prosthetic hand. I think I sort of accomplished that. Not as much as I would have liked to, but due to time constraints, I couldn't completely finish it. But we have everything moving. Everything sort of works. And the fingers work, they move fine. And we just, not everything was connecting as well as we had hoped. But I'd say it was sort of a success. And we wanted to make the hand function with the software. It did that. That was actually one of the things we accomplished that worked pretty well. The um, servos move when they talk to Chad's headset when he when his concentration levels get to a certain point. The servos move, and we want, I wanted to expand my knowledge of mechanical engineering, which of course I did. That was a whole project, and so I designed that. I learned about the engineering process of printing one, realizing it doesn't work, printing another, over and over and over again. And there's a lot. Of that. <laughs> I wanted to um, gain insight on biomedical engineering, which Obviously, that's what that is. And we got to go to um, a cadaver lab, which we'll get into a little bit later. But with that, I gained a lot of insight on biomedical engineering. And I wanted to work on earning my CSWP. I didn't do that, mostly because I realized my solid work skills were not even close up to par. All the stuff I learned on my freshman year in tech drop, I forgot a lot of it. So I was relearning a lot of stuff over here. And there's that. So a little bit about the technology we utilize uh, in the project. So for one, uh, most of you probably don't know what this means, but this is actually just a symbol for the Raspberry Pi, it's their logo. So I'm talking about the fact that, well one, we use the Raspberry Pi uh, software. Um, this is also the MindWave mobile headset. It's the EEG headset, so it collects user brainwave data. And then lastly, I used processing, which I consider you know, technology because it's, um, it's a really effective tool, it's a really powerful tool, and uh, I learned really how to expand beyond basic functions. It's uh, basically an integrated development environment, um, but it's specifically used uh, a lot for drawing uh, items. So I was being able, to, I was able to use the power of that uh, to communicate with my headset and draw the EEG graph. 
And I use some simpler stuff, just some simple engineering stuff. I use SolidWorks, which most of you probably know what that is, to design and um, build the hand. And I assembled it in SolidWorks. Everything to do with the design of the hand was in SolidWorks for me. We started with the MakerBot to print it, but soon we realized that that wasn't effective. It wasn't. It couldn't go into enough detail. It would be want. It was messing up almost every time we printed. So we moved on to the bigger, more powerful 3D printer towards the end of the year. And then, lastly, these are the servos that control the movement of the hand. And you can see them right over here. There's some of these. They spin and allow for the movement of the hand. And so we're going to go into the boring part of the presentation, which are our development timelines. Um, so for October, uh, we'll, 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 we call our project infrastructure month. Um, a lot of the, our classmates call it the secretary work. Um, basically, we handled all the, the career comparisons along those lines. But my goal is for the, the week three and week four of October uh, was to do initial data collection and set up data collection, which is I, I succeeded in doing so. And then for me, October was mostly implementing tension or thinking about how to implement tension into fingers. And I sort of thought about it. You can sort of see it in my earlier designs. I think I have some of those later in the slide I'll show you. And so far it kind of worked. It could have been a little bit better. It didn't move as well as planned, but it still worked. And I wanted to fix any problems with the finger, which, oh, sorry. I guess we had a, one of the fingers printed at that point, which uh, I guess it's range so that's a success. Um, yeah. And so, as all of our fingers did, it had a lot of problems, and I wanted to fix those. Yeah, we had to do a lot of fixing as we went through it. Uh, for software, anything in red is something that was changed, and you'll see what was changed in a second. So week one, I wanted to do data accuracy check. Um, week two, I wanted to do bug fixing. Three and four were sample collection. The problem was is that I didn't actually have a data recorder set up because it ended up being a lot harder than I thought it would be. So as I went through, I had to really change my objectives to setting up that data collector, researching PHP, which is another tool, I, uh, a programming language I use that in interacts with my SQL database, and then continuing to set up the data recorder. I wanted to make sure that it was really effective because it was such a key part of my project. All right, and then the next week for me, or the next month, sorry, was to begin research on different types of servos. And that got done. Um, we found some servos earlier in the year that we used for a while, but they simply weren't powerful enough. We eventually changed over to the new ones that we have right now. I wanted to buy the servos based on strength and cost. At first, I went a lot more towards cost, and the ones we had obviously weren't strong enough. They were too cheap. We have moved on to some higher torque ones. And then I wanted to do servo analysis and testing. Um, since these ones were too weak, we really didn't get into that. And uh, I wanted to implement the servos into the finger. I think at this time, Chad's software wasn't quite ready to be compatible with the servos. And I think that's one of the reasons that we um, didn't test that. And um, I wanted to, or we changed it. And instead of doing those, I fixed more problems with the finger. And we test the finger a little bit. And uh, not with the servos, but working with basically the way it would be wired if there were servos there. And that worked a lot and helped us a lot in designing our future papers. So for December, we're trying to get through this as fast as we can for you. Uh, we're going to go, I wanted to do begin data analysis and error ranges. Um, like I said before, I'm still, I'm still really focused on the data recorder. So I didn't have the ability to actually collect the data and analyze it. So naturally, I had to change it to finalizing the data recorder and then collecting data. That's why a lot of my classmates in the last week before winter break, I was bugging you, or some of my classmates, not all of them. I was bugging you about getting a data from you because I wanted to use that and begin my data analysis. All right, and um, that month of December, I really wanted to test the servos on the finger model, but again, the um, it wasn't the uh, software wasn't ready for that. We eventually got all this done in later months. We kind of adjusted our timeline a lot. And I wanted to fix a lot of compatibility errors that the servos on the finger had. But again, since we couldn't test them with the software, we'll move that away. And then we had a very successful winter break. I like to point that out. <laughs> and so instead, we changed to, um, I redesigned the finger model. And I'm not exactly sure which model it was then, but it was one of the more um, effective ones that I liked. And that worked a lot more, a lot better than the older ones. And I wanted to test the new finger design. 
which I did a little bit of testing when, after we printed it, not with servers or anything, but just like making sure it wasn't going to break or just fall apart really easily. Coming back, I had a very successful month for myself. Um, I had set up the data storage, so that's when I was starting to use MySQL database. It was a lot easier to set up than I thought it would be, um, and it worked out pretty well with the PHP code I had set up. The, we had initial project presentations, so naturally we were successful. Um, initial data collection for final sampling, that's when I, I wanted to, that's, I'm collecting data even more so. Um, I had a ri ridiculous amount of data, and it wasn't even close to being where I wanted to go. I wanted to have upwards of 10,000. Um, I didn't get that far, I only had a couple hundred. So, or a few hundred. So I didn't really get as much as I would like to. And then finally I got the data storage corrections. Um, and that's just fixing any issues I see with sending the data over. Uh, you know, if it skips a line, if it skips, it doesn't auto uh, indent or auto uh, number, I have to just fix that. Okay, and then again we see a little bit of red, but this time we got a little green. And um, I wanted to begin the wrist and palm design process. I made a very early design that was compatible with the fingers and I assembled it, and I think we have, maybe have a picture of that later in the slide. And I wanted to design the wrist and palm around servos and the RAS Pi, but from what I noticed, obviously you can see that just by itself. If I built it around the RAS Pi and the servos, it's going to be massive and your hands not very big. And that one's even just with the servos, is like three hands stacked on top of each other. So it wasn't going to happen with the RAS Pi inside at the time. And I finished my first model of the wrist and palm. We didn't print it because it wasn't a complete. It wasn't complete and ready to print. It was more of a um, uh, just a test model and in SolidWorks, and it worked. We put all the fingers on it. It looked pretty cool, and I wanted to refine any problems with the design. Unfortunately, I didn't get to that that month just due to time constraints. And so we switched over. Um, I wanted to design the wrist and palm that week, and that was the week I finished it. I, or I didn't finish it that week, but I continued to work on it that week. It was a really long process trying to get the exact shape I wanted, and I went through about two or three different designs and found one that finally functioned. And I finalized, and we changed that over. We finalized the finger model to the one we have here, which is a lot more effective than uh, my older one. So for February, um, for the software, I had a few successes. I had uh, one change, and I also had uh, kind of one success as a new cover. You know? um, so green, finished data collection. Uh, I got all the data I wanted to. I was ready to move on, move forward. Begin data analysis. Like I said, didn't have MATLAB, but that's OK. Um, I still had the ability to figure out uh, some of the averages. I just didn't, wasn't able to do my medium, uh, median ranges of, ranges of error. I wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, Begin servo connections. That's when I started connecting the servos to the Raspberry Pi. Um, that's when I started soldering, when I was um, soldering stuff on. And then finally, it was the fine tune data for use. Um, I kind of accomplished this because I was changing it, manipulating it to be useful for what I wanted, but I didn't do it in the way that I originally had thought of when <coughs> approaching the project. Okay, and then February for me. Oh, that's still mine. Oh yeah, it's changed. Continuing finished data collection. So it's just continued more of what I wanted. So yeah, when I say finished data collection, that takes more than one week. Um, it normally takes, to be able to get all the data I wanted, it took me probably about four weeks of just collecting data. Alright, and here we have some uh, not so good colors, but I wanted to fix the compatibility issues with the finger and the palm and the wrist. I sort of did that, not as much as I would have liked to, but I mean, I got a little bit done. And um, in week two, I wanted to test for breakage issues and repair them. We didn't have a print of the model, so obviously there are no, no ways to test the breakage issues. And um, I wanted to begin applying software to the hand design. We did that since Chad got his servos onto his uh, rat's pie, got that working, we got that uh, functioning a little bit. And then week four, I wanted to solve the compatibility issues. I mean, it's, there weren't really many compatibility issues to fix. The servos and the finger was working fairly well at the time, and so there weren't many, too many issues to fix that. And um, okay, so we changed um, that over to continuing to design the palm, 
And with that, I started implementing the servos so they could fit inside the pump. I started making the design more able to function as we had hoped. It was getting really big, and so I tried to trim it down, which, which is one of the reasons that the servos uh, hit each other when we spin. That's okay. It's all for mechanical, so we're finally can go with that new class too. So in March uh, is what, I, what we call our fine tuning month. Um, we had only we had lots of greens and one yellow. So first we wanted to test the grip strength. And there wasn't, we wanted to, originally we wanted to test it with actual numerical values. Um, we just weren't able to do that with given time constraints and the, as you can see, some of the pitfalls that were going on in the project. So what we ended up doing was just uh, testing, you know, the strength of, strength of the finger being able to pull on it with tension, as well as uh, figuring out the stall speed for the torque, the torque moves, or uh, for the, sorry, excuse me, for the servos. Uh, and then in week two, we fixed and add functions were applicable. So this was just when we were fixing all the code and data. A lot of this, this entire month is basically fixing. Um, we just want to make sure that it was bug free. Uh, that way, when you guys came here, you didn't have to deal with me sitting up there, rewriting code, trying to fix it all, make sure it works. All right, and then April, which is this month, we wanted to put our final touches on the hand design. Um, that was a success, uh, I guess you can call it that, but it was pretty decent. We liked how it turned out. It just wasn't as functional as we hoped, and we didn't have um, enough time to make one more model. <coughs> and then we went to um, begin working on our final presentation, which as you can see, was a success. And um, we finished our final presentation preparation the uh, week, uh, week three. And here we are now. And then week four is final presentations. And after today, there will be party time. <laughs> it's always party. So a little bit about our research and progression as we went through the project. Um, we kind of want to prove that we actually did this. So what I had to do was researching, I had to research one brain waves. There's eight different kinds. Um, there's delta, there's high beta, low beta, high alpha, low alpha, uh, there's theta, and then there's uh, low gamma and mid gamma. And they each represent different levels of thought. Um, delta waves, the current, you know, last said right there, occur in deep sleep or unconsciousness. So it's your, your unconscious brain. That's your unconscious thought. So I kind of had to learn a lot about um, how brain waves um, are represented and how I go into that and how I can show numerically what they mean. And then I wanted to go to error ranges and standard deviation to kind of figure out that has to do with the analysis, which I wasn't able to go fully into. I wasn't really able to go into uh, the error ranges for my data, but I did learn a lot about it. I also had a research into PHP and my SQL. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of experience beforehand. PHP is a really powerful tool. It's used to communicate from a, a user or a, web, or a website to a, a web server. So sending information uh, to MySQL database, which is technically a server, it was the kind of the only way I really had to do it, or the way that I was able to do it that was free. Um, and then I also had to learn about Raspberry Pi controls. Like I said earlier, Linux wasn't very familiar to me, so I had to make sure that I was fully understood what I was doing, so I didn't type something in and somehow like my Raspberry Pi on fire. Um, and then lastly, it was our last two was advanced processing functions and cross-language communication. Um, I wanted to learn a lot about processing because it's such a powerful tool. I was able to use it for graphing my EEG data, for sending information to PHP to be sent to my SQL database, but it also required me to understand that information can't be sent in the same way uh, from one language to another. Instead, I sent it in packets, which is basically uh, encrypted, not encrypted, but data broken down into bits, which can be translated by another pro by another language. So here's a little bit of examples. This is my PHP code. Um, it's kind of boring. Uh, all programming kind of is, but it's kind of proof that what's going on here. All of these sections are the same. So what you can see here is exactly the same. What happens here is that it just determines. Okay, here is what processing is sent to me, here's the important information, and here's where I go with it. That's all I'll say about that. Here's just a little more examples of my processing code. Um, I actually printed this out when I had 770 lines of processing code. That doesn't include my PHP, which had about another 150 to 200, um, and then my Python code. So I had quite a bit of coding. I wasn't just sitting around. Okay, and then uh, again, my research was a little bit simpler, simply because it's tangible. Um, but firstly, I want to uh, put research into joints, and because that's kind of the most important thing about the fingers is the joints. And so first, there's a ball and socket joint, which is actually the one we ended up using in the end. At first, I didn't think it was going to print right, which 
came out to be true, but once we moved on to the better printer, they turned out a lot better. The second one was a hinge joint, and um, well, I tried to make a model with that, and earlier I made a model that was really bad and really thin, and everyone warned me not to print it. It wasn't going to work. I didn't heed their warning. It obviously didn't work, and it had to do with the last one, the last one, <laughs> and um, so after that, I'm a couple models later, after I used the ball and sock, I wanted to at least try the hinge joint. And then Braden took one look at it and was like, no. And so that's how I did heat this morning. And I didn't print that one. And then looking back on it, there's no way it would have worked. So thankfully, I didn't use that one. But the ball and sock, it was the one we ended up using. And so here again are the same stuff. I had to do a lot of research into SolidWorks, because like I said before, my SolidWorks skills were lacking as I forgot a lot of stuff I learned in tech drop. So I had to relearn a lot of stuff, but I got a lot of help from uh, Tim and Brandon in the chat. And then I used the MakerBot, which was having a lot of issues with uh, just the printing and not having enough detail. So me and Chad did a lot of work finding out what infill we needed to do, what support we needed to put on, things like that. And lastly, the servos. I did a little bit of research into the power and the torque they gave out, and especially the cost was what I put the last research into. And here is one of my favorite finger designs. It was one of the later ones. It's kind of creepy. It's got a weird looking fingernail on it. Um, it looked, in theory, it should have been pretty effective. But when we went to print it on the MakerBot, obviously there's just way too much detail for something so small. It just tore itself apart, rat nested in the printer. Just was an overall mess. And so we had to change it to be a little bit simpler. And so there's my first hand model. Um, as you can see, the palm is very simple. There's no, there's not enough room for anything in there. I just made it to test that the fingers would bend and grab and be able to do the stuff they needed to. And those are, um, yeah, those are the creepy fingers on there. And there is our final finger that you can see up there. There's a couple examples of it. And this one was based off the last one, except I made it a little bit more accurate in shape since your finger gets a little bit smaller as it goes down. And I didn't put very much detail in it, just simply so it would actually be able to print. And it works so much better than any of the other ones. It actually did destroy itself. And then there is our final hand design um, in SolidWorks render. And it looks a lot better there than it did um, up there, but that's okay. Um, it had a lid, and the lid went on and covered all the servos, but unfortunately all the pins broke. They're a little bit too small. There are pins inside for the um, servos to attach to. Those were too small. They broke as well. But everything worked out. We have that there, the servos fit inside. Oh, so uh, first, before I move this, yeah, that's just kind of, I mean, that's the process of engineering. It's basically stuff breaks, uh, or when you design something, stuff doesn't work right, and you redesign it. So, a little bit of warning um, if you don't like dead bodies or anything along those lines, don't look, don't watch, close your eyes or something, um, and I'll let you know when we're done. But we kind of had a really, really unique experience, something I didn't expect at all to be able to go uh, for this project. We were actually able to go and uh, Hand shoes, right? Hand shoes. Yep. Yep. I, don't it. I don't know how to pronounce it. I can't speak. Um, medical school, and we were able to see see their cadaver lab. So these aren't pictures of us, but they're pictures of another cadaver, and it kind of shows the experience when you go there. We, we were really fortunate because we we were able to do exactly what this girl is doing here. We were able to to look at the hand and pull on it and see how the tendons react when you when you pull on it. And um, I know that just going there, I, I learned I had a lot of inspiration for the project. And I'm sure Zach did as well. Yeah, it was um, actually really helpful. And one of my favorite things that we got to see wasn't the hand, surprisingly, because that was kind of what our whole project was about. It was actually the giant tumor that the cadaver had inside. It's about the size of a baby. It's almost as cute. <laughs> and, uh, we got to hold it. It was probably pretty close to seven to ten pounds, somewhere in that range. It was 
pretty massive. <laughs> yeah. It was insane because we, we went to look at a hand and we got that. We got to see a tumor, a heart. We got to see, you know, her liver was all the way pressed all the way up here. It was, it was insane. Um, and it's only because of our expert advisor that we were able to do that. So we especially want to thank uh, him for that. So for our project outcomes, uh, for my software development, I had a, a few things. Easy to use data recorder. So over here, it doesn't look like much, but this is actually 770 lines of the code and everything that it can do. Basically, it's two buttons, and it do, they do two different things. One, to record trials for me to collect data. I wanted the user interface to be really easy, because the easier it is to collect data, and the faster I can do it, the more data I can get. I also wanted to be able to display the live graph, so that I wasn't having to change between, between programs when I was showing it off. Also, with the Raspberry Pi, um, I had this done, the Raspberry Pi Servo Control. This doesn't really encompass everything that goes into it. The coding that went into this was the most complicated part. But I also learned about soldering. I learned about uh, putting together electrical components, which kind of tied into electrical engineering, which wasn't really part of my job description. Um, but it definitely, I learned a lot about how to work the Raspberry Pi, and I learned a lot about electrical systems, which is nice. Um, in, in doing this, I also learned about something with power usage. Um, originally, a lot of our servers melted. Our plastic ones, they actually melted because we have this thing called servo buzz, which is when there's not enough power or there's electrical noise in the servos, and they vibrate, and they vibrate and they get really hot, and then we had servos that were just melted. You would look inside and the ears were just gone. So what we did is we switched over to the high torque metal ears. Um, and then lastly, I had an EEG rolling graph, and you can see this here. This is actually, a, a, not right now, but it's a live feed when you watch it, of your raw EEG data, so you can see the spikes and dips in your phone. Okay, and then um, my project outcomes, we had a working hand. It wasn't as great as we wanted to, but everything in theory should have worked. It was just they weren't meshing together properly. We, the fingers worked perfectly. They worked as, as just as we expected them to. The servos worked perfectly. They communicated with the code. They worked, that worked. Um, the hand, everything fit on there. And just for some reason, they didn't want to connect together. But that was okay. It's, Proof of concept. It looks good. And then I wanted a functioning housing for the mechanics of the hand, which, as I said before, it's way too big for um, everything to fit in there. But got that. It looks everything fits in there now. Um, if we had more time and money, we really wanted to get smaller, more powerful servos so we could collapse it down, make a more reasonably sized hand. And I wanted the full printed 3D model of the hand, which you can see over there. And that took um, a while for us to do because we wanted to make sure when we printed it, we had it right. And unfortunately, we didn't get to print another one that wasn't, that was a little bit more modified and worked a little bit better. But we, and then we had a functioning hand compatible with the software, which was evidently the end goal of the entire project. So accomplishing that was pretty nice because it, all the servos, everything worked with Chad software. So going into just a little bit of our bibliography, kind of ignore this. There's websites. All right, so we just going to give a special thanks uh, to Kevin Kastner for the uh, Kevin, or Kastner Images um, for providing the cadaver photos. Um, without him, we wouldn't have those beautiful photos. It would just kind of make pictures of our ugly bugs, and you don't want to see that again. You're going to this once. So, any questions about the project? Questions. No questions? Yes. Why didn't you use the uh, Pi Zero instead of the Pi? Would that would have saved you some space? It would have, um, and I, I wanted to switch over to something like that. Um, but the problem was, is I was so unfamiliar with the Raspberry Pi system at first that I wanted to get up. Kind of emerge myself in the Raspberry Pi and Raspberry 2B, um, just so that way I can kind of learn how to do it for future use as well. So if I were to redo this project, um, I would definitely use a smaller microcontroller. Um, uh, right now it's just 3D printing plastic, but eventually, if we were to continue this, we'd end up using a more uh, squishy, fleshy. Um, bendable type of 3D printing material that's more akin to flesh. And we wanted to add like a residue or something on the fingers so that you can use touchscreen 
So that's touch screen compatibility. So I heard you keep saying that if you had more time, you could make it better. How exactly would you do that? So what we were describing, at least what Zach was describing, was that if we had if we had more time, we would be able to add the more controls, the more data, uh, more data collection. We can also miniaturize everything. So this is kind of taking similar to your project where you had the alpha uh, of your stuff. This is our pre-alpha. This is where we would. This is our baseline. We know that the software works. We know that structurally everything is correct. Um, at least for the fingers, it's just time for us to miniaturize, and that process takes time. Um, as well as the data collection, like I was talking about, if I have more data, it's going to be more accurate, it's going to be uh, more precise, and it'll be able to function in more situations. What's the cost of the whole So, um, I'll just hand yeah, this one. For one, this EEG headset put me back $100. So it was pretty expensive. Um, all together, I'd say it's a little over, for this project, it's a little over $250. That's including the factor of buying multiple servos, uh, having to pay for plastic, having to pay for Raspberry Pi, for the hats, for shipping, for all that. Um, I, would put, I would estimate the unit all together without including shipping is about 200 Yes? I'm sorry if I missed this, but you mentioned uh, learning about brainwaves. How did that fit into what you ultimately created? So, go back here. Don't close your eyes. Okay. So, uh, anyway, this is basically this is where we I sent the, the data to it. Um, the reason, the way it factored into it is that. I was I'm able to uh, analyze the data at different levels. Um, I wasn't able to do the full analysis that I wanted, but I'm still able to find averages of the data. So I made, I was able to use the brainwaves as examples because a lot of people seem a lot of people think that uh, everyone thinks differently. Like there's different connections in the brain, which is true, but a lot of people think things in the same way, which is why you're able to mind map. You're able to map people's thoughts, which is kind of applying the same principle. Is that if we test multiple people and we test uh, multiple times, we're able to get an average of the data for that thought. So when I was testing them, they would think open hand. So if we find the averages for that data, we use that, um, and then we can uh, we can compare it to the values being sent to the Raspberry Pi and use that to control the service. Does that answer your question? Very good. <laughs> it's hard for me to understand. So basically, what you do is you digitize. That. Exactly. Okay. My my yeah, my entire goal of this project was for me to connect the human element to the mechanical. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you. Good job.